Even though, as we're going to see shortly, Huffman coding is actually optimal, it's only optimal as a symbol code. And it turns out that there are some situations in which any symbol code, even an optimal one, is going to perform poorly. And in this video, we're going to take a look at an example to illustrate the kinds of situations in which this occurs. Roughly speaking, the, the types of situations in which it occurs is when a source has low entropy. Now, we know that Huffman, it's, since it's optimal, then it's always within one of the entropy. So the entropy is a lower bound on the expected code word length. And for an optimal code, the expected code word length is strictly less than the entropy plus one. But it turns out, so the, the example that we're going to give in this video can be sort of generalized to show that, in fact, you can be arbitrarily close to this upper limit. The expected code word length of the optimal code can get arbitrarily close to this upper limit. And we'll see why that's why that's actually can be quite bad. So here's the example. Let's say you have the following probabilities. So we'll just write this in our usual way for Huffman. Let's say we have our source has just let's say that X you know is just uh, a two element set. So there's only one and two are our only source symbols. So we're going to have two probabilities: 0 0.001 say and 0.999. Now, when we construct a Huffman code, well, you may already see what the optimal code is. If we do a Huffman code, then we there's only two things, so we have to add those. We get 1.0, and if we do just the usual thing, we get code words 0 and 1. You might have been able to already see that this was pretty clearly going to be the optimal code. If you think about for a minute, that it's pretty clear why you would have to have this being the optimal code when you only have two elements in your source alphabet. But this is what we get from Huffman, and so we know it's optimal. And of course, the lengths here are one and one. These are our lengths. And from this, we can immediately conclude, since all of the lengths of the code words are the same, that in fact, the expected code word length must also be that value, in this case, one. Okay, so that, you know, one that looks maybe not too shabby. Let's also do, let's do just for comparison, maybe. Uh, let's also do Shannon code. Let's see what Shannon has to say in this situation. So this was Huffman. This was Huffman. We also looked at Shannon code, and Shannon code al also had this property here. So let's do a Shannon code over here. Shannon. We'll build up to the punchline. So Shannon says, okay, take these same probabilities, point, let's scoot a little over, 0 0.001, 0 0.999, that's the P's, and then we're going to compute log since we're doing a, uh, it's a base two, since we're doing a binary code, one over P of X, and I pre-computed these ahead of time to make things, make things easier to, to, so you wouldn't have to wait, and we get here for these logs, this is roughly this is about 10. And this one is roughly, what is this one? This one's roughly 0 0.0014. And Shannon says, okay, compute these guys and then round that up. And that gives you your lengths. Your lengths. This thing rounded up to the nearest integer. This happens to be a little less than 10, actually. So it rounds up to 10. And this rounds up to 1. Shannon says round it up, so that's what we do. We can't, obviously, we can't, it can't be zero. We can't have a code word of length zero. That would not be uniquely decodable. And so what do we get for our expected code word length under Shannon? So Huffman was, Huffman was one. And Shannon is going to be, well, if we multiply these two, this by this guy and this by this guy, add them together, you get, I calculated ahead of time, you get roughly... 1.009. So that's L. Shannon, that's L. Huffman. So actually it's pretty close to, to the Huffman. Now if you look at this, I mean if you think about what this is saying, 10, that's saying, so Shannon says construct a code with those lengths for the code word. So this one is going to be you know length 1, this one's going to be a code word of length 10. So if we construct a prefix code, maybe we choose this one to be, say, 0, 
and this one to be say yeah it just has to be a prefix code so let's say one 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 zero this would be a code that that would be a Shannon code but gosh that seems really silly to give this guy 10 symbols boy that really seems like a big waste right you know this one's as small as you can get and still be a positive integer so so that doesn't seem so bad but well, gosh that seems kinda silly to take a code word of length 10 so now what is the so what is the entropy so we computed the the expected code word length for each each of these guys and now let's let's see what the entropy is so the entropy I have also pre-computed and the entropy for this distribution 0 0.001 0 0.999 is roughly roughly 0 0.01 0 0.01 which is way less than either of these guys so we have h2 0 0.01 way less than l huffman which is one so maybe i'll put it this way h2 less than l huffman less than l shannon strictly less than h plus one and each of these in turn is one. We just plug in here just to visually compare. 1.01. 1 .01. So we know that our bounds are satisfied. I mean, we, we proved that the, these bounds ought to hold, and they do. But boy, I mean, 1 is a heck of a lot bigger than 0.01. And yet in comparison with Shannon, you know, 1.009 uh, is, is really not that far off from, from the 1. So this is this is a real problem with this even with the Huffman code even though it's optimal if say you had say you had a source uh, say you had n source symbols and you were going to encode this well the ideal thing you know sort of the ideal length if you could take non integer length code words it would be n times the entropy or you know about 0.01 n but the best you can do with the symbol code Huffman's the best you can do and it's saying n you have to encode it with length n and that's not too far off from 1.0009 n but both of these are 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 way far from the ideal and by making this distribution even more sort of um, asymmetric, making this value, this probability even smaller, 0 0.000001, and this one 0.999999, then you can make this discrepancy as large as you want. You can make the expected code word length of the optimal code as close to the entropy plus one, this guy, as you wish. And the reason is because as you as this guy is going to zero, the entropy of the distribution is going to zero. Now this generalizes, you might think this is a little bit contrived, this generalizes to, you know, for any uh, finite set, you can construct a, a distribution with, with low entropy and, and you're going to have a similar problem. Now I'd like to point out one thing about Shannon, the Shannon code over here, even though it looked like this, giving this, this code word 10 symbols really seemed like a waste. In fact, when we computed the expected code word length, this 10 was not contributing much. That was the 0 0.009 part. That was the little part. The real whopper part, the one part, was from this guy, from the fact that we had to round up 0 0.0014 all the way up to 1. That was what really killed us. That's what made us have bad performance in the Shannon code. It wasn't this this silly code word that seemed so sort of uh, sort of bad, but it was actually the one that was making things bad. Now, one way that you can, so getting back to Huffman over here, one way that you can remedy this situation, a sort of hack way, is to use blocks. So we saw that you could get arbitrarily close to the entropy by using blocks and coding blocks. And you can do that, certainly. You can you can even do that with Huffman, you know, take blocks and encode blocks of, of length k, say, you know, blocks x1 to xk, and encode those with Huffman. And you can do that. You can get arbitrarily close to the entropy. 
However, the, the size of the source alphabet that you're going to be constructing a Huffman code for is growing exponentially because the number of, of, of possible code words like this is, so each of these code words, these are in x to the k. So you're constructing a code over a source alphabet of size the order of x to the k. And so this is growing exponentially as k is increasing. So it's growing very, very quickly. And, and if you're going to drive your expected code word length down toward the entropy, you're going to be paying a hefty price because of this exponential increase in your computation. So that is highly unsatisfactory. So it's all lost, you know, Huffman was optimal. And, and gosh, you know, in this, these sorts of examples, it's really looking not too good. And it turns out, fortunately, that there is a very elegant way. I'm, you know, other people have probably come up with other remedies for this, trying to work around Huffman. But a very elegant solution to this problem is in arithmetic codes. Arithmetic codes are a beautiful way to get around the problem of having to have integer valued code word lengths. That was the real killer here, is that we had to have integer valued code word lengths. And by using arithmetic coding, we can essentially, in, in some sense, have non-integer integer valued code word lengths. And we can end up getting much better performance than Huffman codes for the for an equivalent computational cost because you know Huffman codes would be optimal if you could take k very large but it just becomes totally impractical whereas arithmetic codes scale up very very well